Click the link in the description for your free AMSOIL catalog. Before we get started, I'd like to give a quick shout out to some of our friends. The Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. Search for them on Facebook. Central Minnesota Pond Racing. Search for them on Facebook. The historic Lancaster Motel for the ultimate Eastern trail riding adventure. Crane's Snowmobile Museum at 172 Main Street in Lancaster, New Hampshire. The Vintage Snowmobile Club of America Quarterly Magazine. The New Hampshire Snowmobile Museum at Bear Brook State Park in Allenstown, New Hampshire. And lastly, if you decide to advertise with the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast, this could be your advertising message. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really glad you're here. Now I have, as usual, a robust lineup of vintage snowmobile entertainment on tap for you tonight. But before we get into all of that, I want to make sure that everything is working properly. So if you can see my face and hear my voice, I'm going to ask you to leave a comment. Uh, please let me know where you're viewing this from and whether you are a first time viewer, a regular viewer. Now, to our first-time viewers, if this is your first time hanging out with us tonight, I hope you have a good time with us. I also hope that you decide to join us here each and every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. This podcast simulcasts to eight different places across Facebook and YouTube. So wherever you're viewing this right now, just circle back in one week's time, and we'll be waiting for you with another fun-filled episode. Now, to our regular viewers who are here week after week, month after month, and season after season, you guys are the ones who make this possible, and we really, really appreciate that. So let's take a few comments. They're coming in hot and heavy. Let's take a few, and we'll get this party started. We've got the VCJ Vids saying hi there. Hi there, back. Nice to see you. Ah, our good friend Bill Nast is in the house tonight saying, hey, Mike, how's it going? It's going well. Hope it's going well for you too, Bill. Um, let's see. David from Alaska Railroad says, good evening, Mike, Rob, and everyone. Nice to see you, David. Appreciate that. Jeffrey Patton is in the house. Good evening, Mike and Rob, regular viewer from PA. Now, I have to say, Rob, unfortunately, can't make it tonight. He's got something he's doing, but I sent him the link to join, so if he finishes early, he could pop on. No promises, no guarantees, but uh, you never know. Uh, Mad Dog is in the house. Uh, hello, Mike and Rob. Randy from Wisconsin, regular viewer from Wisconsin. Nice to see you, Mad Dog. Uh, also, someone, uh, oh, Sudbury, Ontario. This must be Kevin Colhane. Uh, watching on Facebook, regular viewer, nice to see you, says we're loud and clear. Jill Fien is in the house from Austin, Texas, nice to see you. Now, Jill might be the young lady who was on that uh, cover photo. We're going to find that out a little later. Uh, Jim Holbrook is in the house, uh, regular viewer, loud and clear, nice to see you. My good friend John Spranger Jr. says good evening from Elon, Wisconsin, nice to see you. Uh, ben Thomas is in the house, good evening from Carterville, New York, sounding good, loud and clear. We appreciate that feedback. Just a few more here. We'll take. We'll bring our guest on. Uh, Todd McMillan says hello uh, from Madoc, Ontario, Canada. Nice to see you. Uh, Reese Fleury is in the house. Good evening from Tupper Lake, New York. Regular viewer. He's one of our earliest and most regular viewers, and we very much appreciate that. Dave Trim is in the house from Carthage, New York. Nice to see you, Dave. And uh, Mark Redil is in the house saying, saying <coughs> "Pardon me, it's sounding good here in Ohio." Well, we appreciate that. Uh, let's not waste any more time here. We're going to bring my good friend on, Alan Gove. Uh, let me just click the right buttons here to bring him on the podcast and turn his microphone on. Alan, how are you doing tonight? Hey, Mike, I'm doing well here. I hear you. Well, good, I good. Really appreciate it. Glad to hear it. And we appreciate you coming on. I know we've talked about this for quite some time, and it's nice to find when it all finally comes together. Oh, yes, it is. Be a lot of, it should be a good evening for Yes, I think we're going to have a lot of fun. We've got a lot of show and tell. Now, now, Alan has shared with us a lot of images and video clips, which we're going to get right into. Uh, do you want to give us a quick, uh, maybe one minute uh, comment about yourself and where you're from and how you come to, to be interested in vintage snowmobiles and like that? Yeah, um, I started off uh, by my folks bought a snowmobile back in 1970, which was a 303 Wanko. And uh, we've still got it here in the family. And we got a, I bought a 70. 
Panthers, 340 Super Sack for a year later, which is down in the barn. I got to do some work on that. We got that back in the family. And I uh, got my grandfather's 72 Lynx that he bought brand new. We've got that in the family, which is um, my youngest daughter owns jail, but she lives in Texas. So we throw it at my sister's place so she rides and gets exercise and stuff. And, nice. and I've been, you know, I've been swimming balance since I was a kid like that. And years ago, my folks decided they wanted to sell the Wanko. And so they sold it to a guy. And, and then uh, my youngest daughter says, ha ha. We want that sled back. So she ran into the guy and we got the sled back. She bought them both. So now the sleds are here to stay. Back in the family. That's cool. And was that her making a comment earlier? Yes, it was, Jill. And this is this is Jill we're looking at right here on the screen. Yes, that's my youngest daughter and my oldest daughter, Cheryl, who lives in the next town over. I'm not sure if she's on tonight or not. She's a big snowmobile also, but last two years they've been too busy, uh, with the ski jumping with my two grandsons. So they're in the Eastern group. So I've been out to Lake Class and everything, jumping. Outstanding. Yep. Yep. Good deal. So it sounds like at least three generations of your family is, is in snowmobiling. <clears throat> well, it's not really five. Because my grandfather was in there. He had a snowmobile. So we're up to five generations with the uh, grandsons um, who, who were snowmobile. I've got videos of them driving and riding because my oldest grandson will be 15 next month so outstanding yeah he can ride a snowmobile no problem at all good good so what i'm going to do is i've got uh, some images that you sent me i'm going to pull them up and uh maybe go for a little while and, and talk about some stories associated with these yeah. i know this is a a, a lot of, it brings up a lot of fond memories for you what well, are we looking at here in this image this picture here is my folks uh <clears throat> green jacket, my mother with the red slacks on, and that's my cousin. We're all, I went out for a ride that day to have a hot dog somewhere, something we used to do every week and uh, get together and we mentioned where we are going to go and meet and, and uh, mom and dad would ride double on that sled there. And Underneath that seat there was a three inch box and that's where mom stored all the mustard relish hot dogs so we called that mom's lunch wagon for a long, long time. Uh, my sister would ride with me on my sled at the time. And my cousin, we'd all go ahead and get the fires going. And then other people would come in and meet us at certain spots. And we all have a hot dog and marshmallows or whatever we wanted to do. And then we'd all head home. It'd be a, a, a Sunday afternoon ride. Wonderful. Lock and I don't, know about, I don't know about the viewers, but I know I have, have a lot of wonderful memories of cookouts on the trail side like that. If, if viewers have memories like that, please weigh in with comments. We'd love to hear uh, that, that you have similar experiences or memories of that. But but please cl please continue, Alan. Yeah, we still do uh, hot dogs and stuff. Uh, some of the clubs meet certain places down here. I know the Mascoma uh, Club down here in Springfield. We, they have a hot dog get-together. And the Cardigan Mountain Club, which I also belong to, they get together. We have some hot dogs. And, well, I believe two years ago we had a guy in Always had a snowmobile. Matter of fact, his original order, my seventy three forty super sacks. We got him back out on a on his new sled, and we, we pulled off side the trail. And I said, "Bob, it's time for a hot dog." He said, "I haven't done this in years." So we built a campfire, and there was six guys who were retired. We all sat there and had hot dogs, just like old times. Just like old times. Yeah, that's amazing. And we do have some comments coming in. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Trying to find my place here. Okay, I think this is the last one. Uh, Midnight Rider says, another wonderful evening. Looking forward to another amazing show. And thank you so much. We appreciate that compliment. Also, good. our good friend Glenn Ford is in the house saying good evening. Regular viewer from Vernon Center, New York. Uh, Kevin Culhane, who was on here a couple of weeks ago, says loud and clear at the office in Sudbury. Office is code for the bar, my local watering hole. Very cool. I like how you do that. It's a cool wordplay there. Uh, Steve Woodward says, rock and roll. Thank you. Good. And then, uh, Michael Carvela says, good evening, Mike, regular viewer from Upper Peninsula, Michigan. So I like we've got a nice mix of viewers from all over the U.S. and Canada. I recognize um, regular viewers because I've been a regular viewer on your show here for quite a while. So For a very long time. Yeah, we appreciate that. And I love when it all comes together, we bring you on the show like that. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I'm glad to meet you there at Lancaster. And we discussed a lot. This is the that's group. right. Here's one of the a group of people just start riding. We all met 
at the intersection of a trail is a variety of some of it. I half those up, but we had a good ride that day. Nice. And this looks probably early 70s, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah this is 70. I'm guessing 71. 71. Yep, yeah, somewhere along it. The fact in the the town didn't plow this section of roads. It was only plowed, uh, only maintained in the summer. Now yeah. it's maintained year round instead of in this section. Uh, I know where the exact where that is, but if you look at the background, it's all trees and all grown up now. Cause that it's was all grown in. 50 years ago. Sure. But at the time, you say in the winter, it was just snowmobile trail. Yeah, just a snowmobile trail. Because back then, we had snow. Sure. We, had, we spent a lot of time, it seemed like every Saturday, we had to go out and break the trail so we all get the other people out on a Sunday. Nice. So. And I don't know about you, but I remember when we used to go trail riding, we'd start off maybe three or four of us, less than our neighbors in most cases. And I don't know, you get a couple miles out and you meet some people you know, and now they're part of the group and you go a little further yeah. and you meet some more people. And that, I, I, after a while, it becomes this big convoy. That's how this group here all got together. They all kept following us right out through and we all stopped at this intersection. Some of them were lost. They were from you know, out of state. weren't sure where the trails were, and they were new at snowmobile. And we ended up having building a fire right then, cooking hot dogs. Nice. And if you so, if you if you didn't if you weren't friends before, you're friends now, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. You made that's the way that worked. <laughs> made a lot of friends up snowmobiling. I mean, it's a good family get together. I think getting people out and stuff. Yeah, and my memory of it, it was that everyone was, was jovial and everyone was laughing and joking and having a good time. Oh, we always had a good time. We used to go on the pond there and some Saturday afternoon we'd have a fire or this. Some people would be ice fishing. We'd have some drag races and just had a good time. Yeah, good, good time. clean fun. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got more uh, images coming in. I'm uh, sorry, more comments coming in. Let me find my place here. All right, here we go. Jeff Wesner. Uh, says, sounding great from Wisconsin. Nice to see you. Uh, Brian Van Haverbeek says, good evening, guys. He's a fellow cat guy. Uh, Jeff Wesner says, cross country. Uh, Snow Cross was canceled in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Amazon Snow Cross Nationals. That's a bummer to hear that that was canceled, but we appreciate the news. We like to be the place where news and information about the vintage snowmobile scene is shared on this podcast. Uh, David from Alaska Railroad says, good evening to Alan. That's quite a long history of snow machine riding and your family. Yes, it is. I mean, you figure, well, 1969, um, 19, well, I was 1970, we bought the first machine. I rode before that. Um, I tried to find exactly what year it was. A friend of ours had bought a Sears and Roebuck snowmobile. Mm. I want to say it was a 67, 68. Uh, it had the bigger motor. It was, it was sort of a reddish color, if I recall. And he would call up my father and say, bring that young guy up here. Let him exercise that snowmobile around the yard up here. And that <laughs> Snowmobile, and some other people got snowmobiles, and and to help we out, we had a out of cat dealer right in Canaan, and they down yeah. up. Uh, we were originally going to buy a Skidoo, Nordic at the time, because we had some friends that got those over on the pond there, and we went to the Skidoo dealer three times. They were always closed, so that's yeah, the heck with that. So we stopped at the out cat dealer on the way home. He said, "You don't want one of those things. You take here, take this out of cat wake or I didn't take it home." And try it out. Well, they never went back. No turning back. No turning back. We went out trail riding. And we went places where uh, some of the other guys couldn't go. So that's convinced us to. to I've had Yamahas. I've had Polaris's also in between. But I'm back to riding a, a 2020 Attic Cat now. Nice. Nice. And we've got plenty of comments coming in too, commenting about liking these images and, you know, the memories and everything. Uh, Jim Holbrook is asking where. Is this photo taken? And I, and I believe that was in New Hampshire somewhere. You said right. All, these are all New Hampshire photos. I've done. New Hampshire. Yep. Nice. And then someone said we had cooks too, and I have twelve to fourteen sleds that are vintage. Good. Cool. And then uh, someone says, uh, "Can you explain what is a seventy-three Super Sox?" Uh, the Sox. It's a three forty SS Super Sox. Uh, they only made so many of those. It's a little bit smaller motor than the 368 sax, but it puts out more horsepower and more torque. Um, they put them in the 1970 out of cats back then in the Panthers. And I think they had some in the, the Lynxes and some of the Boomers. But a lot of the ground here would love to have that sled I got because it's one of the originals with that motor in it. Uh, 
I use them for racing. Nice. I did I did race it myself a few years ago. Once I got it back, and uh, I was doing well, and I got into a corner with the other with the leader. I blew a piston, so did he. So we uh, we got bumped out of the race. Wow. 2055 age grouping up. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was one of the old one. Crazy. Oh yeah. Now, Jeff Wesner is talking about the trail systems back then. He says we do a lot of ditch banging in Wisconsin, and until the 70s, the, the clubs were burned. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it means by that, but the yeah, 70s, I mean, the 70s had yeah. the club around here. I do know that. Sure. And, uh, you know, we did a lot of ditch banging ourselves. You know, we had homemade drags that we made out of wood. And, excuse me, then years later, I picked up a 71 Wankel that I used for grooming trails. I wish I had pictures of that somewhere, but I had a homemade drag made up out of meadow and sort of copied the old track pack. And I used to go out at 9 o'clock at night and get back in 2 o'clock in the morning and go grooming half the night and go to work the next day. Wow. That's true. Everyone was so excited about it and committed to it back in the day. Everyone didn't mind staying up at the night or, you know, whatever it took to, to contribute to the trails yeah. and making everything happen. Oh, the clouds and, really that was around here now. I mean, we got guys that are out there. I groom once in a while for them, but I usually try to go out during the day, uh, go three o'clock in the morning, up and jump in the groom and groom for the day. Nice. Some trails are not much traffic on. Yeah. Sure. Oh, and then uh, let me see. Jim Jim Holbrook says the cat dealer in Canaan was Tux. Is that your memory? It was. Yes, it was. Nice, nice. I got got three of his sleds. Wow, yeah, that is Canaan. cool. We'll be looking at those in a minute too. And then uh, someone's asking about how many of these sleds are owned by these three generations. Um, same sleds. Wow. Yep, same sleds. So, so we'll take a look at some more of these images here. Bring up some more of that. This sled here is, is funny. Um, had a guy that picked this sled up underneath a pine tree. He did have the seat inside. And uh, I'd found some old motor skis and stuff and some other old machines, which I didn't, didn't want. But he was a motor ski collector. So we did some wheel and deal, and I bought this sled home and uh, stripped it all down, cleaned it all up. It only had 467 original miles on it. Wow. And had a 399 Cola motor in it, which those weren't the best motors back in the way. They just couldn't get them to run smooth. So I junked the motor because it was full of water, all seized up. And I put in a, uh, a 368 Sachs motor into this machine. Uh, Wayne, my friend, who rebuilds all my motors for me. Uh, I thought I'd like to get him on the show here one of these nights. He does real good work. And, uh, yeah, love to see that. This young guy here, he's only 26 years old. He's uh, into the vintage stuff. He's got an old fire truck. And now he's got an old 52 five mile tractor. And he asked me about this machine here. And so I ended up selling this machine to him a little over a year ago. And I think it's a brand new seat cover he put on there. And he, I know he put the new blue wheel on. Other than that, it's done right there. For only 400 and some odd miles. It turns out that originally his neighbor's machine in Canaan. Wow, so machines right back one house, one house up from where the original came from. Really? Yeah. So it's the sled even in the neighborhood. Even in the neighborhood, and that sled they also came from Tuck's shop in Canaan. That's amazing. And yeah, we've got some footage of him a little later in the podcast of him riding riding by with that. Yeah. Cool. And we've got plenty more images here. Let's see what the next one is. Just takes a moment for it to load. Here we go. Who's this guy? That's me out on my dad's sled. Seventy K. You can see a lot of the decals and stuff all off of all up. Uh, took it out in the field and went for a ride around, and my wife took that picture, I believe, uh, unless it's one of my daughters. Nice that day there. Now Todd Melanick saying that he and his dad used to go every Sunday on a snowmobile back in the day, and he said it was the best time ever. And I know exactly what you mean, and I totally agree, and I'm sure you do too. Oh, I agree. I mean, that's why. Hey, we had that sled there, then a year later, I bought a sled. Uh, Tuck shop in Canaan. I was working at the grocery store. And he came out to me and he said, I got a sled for you to take home and try out, young fella. He said, it will really move. I said, okay. So uh, lucky enough, I had my dad's truck that day. So I went over at noon and 
loaded up the moment. My father, and he said, what do you got? And I said, I don't know. Supposed to be a good sled. Let's take it out for a ride. And, and I had fun beating some, some of the guys I really wanted to beat over on with it, not knowing that the machine really set up for racing back then. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> We had some good times, so that would gave us all a chance to go out somewhere with them. We were riding, other riding my bike. Nice. My, I get, gave everyone a taste for it. Oh, I gave my sister a, a good taste sitting on the back. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, this all. is this is you also. Or? Yeah. Also, yep, yep. Nice. Got in the ad. Very cool. And let's see what else we've got here. That's my 71 Puma I picked up. I had a, originally had a 71 Puma uh, one also back then. Had a 399 KL and I sold it and I wish I never had, but I did. And uh, I tried to find one of these sleds that was in good shape. I didn't have to put a lot of money into it. And it turned out I was able to get this one here by wheeling and dealing. And they put a 440 Kawasaki motor and this is my sled that I use for vintage rides around here right now. Oh, yeah, currently using that. Yep, yep. Nice. And then someone on Facebook is saying those big Panthers were known as Cadillacs, C-A-T, Illax. Well, you, you, you've seen the picture. That my I remember dad, that. My Even dad, their ads would say that. My dad's a big guy, and uh, my mother's a good guy, and they used to ride double neck wank all the time. Well, Joe's got a – used to fall asleep riding them, yep, back and then. She, she, she'd ride in front of you, it sounds like. Yep. Yep, sure. That's my cool. Because yeah, I said we made these things. And in case anyone is wondering, this is a, an image of Jill right here. Yep, it's Jill right there on the uh, links. Very cool. And she's viewing from Texas tonight, I believe. Yes, she does. She lives outside of Austin. All the time. Very cool. Yeah, and she says you used to fall asleep riding with Grandpa. Those must be good memories. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool deal. Cool deal. And then let's see what else we've got for images here. Is this it? No, it's a that's a Panther, isn't it? Oh, that's my 340 Super Sax. That's what I raced it. That's the one, yes. 52J. We named that after the jail. 52J. The original. Still owns that. She, believe it. Oh, she won't sell it back to me. Really? Yeah, she's out. It's my name. It's supposed to be that way. But you can do what you want to it. Sure. I just, like I said, I just put it on the motor into it last summer. I got to get the press up and get the lead back up. We probably never race but once it's back in shape. She used to race for um, LaCroix down there. She raced Yamaha for a good many years. It did well, real well. Speed is not yeah. a, he's got a, a very full like, like I do. So here we yeah. are. Here we are down at the show. It is Robbie got a note on there. Uh, yes, Robbie LaCroix. You because you yep. were just talking about racing for LaCroix. Yeah. And Robbie says she was a hell of a racer and she rode a Yamaha GP two ninety two. Yes, she did. And got so the even the girls up Herman Maine didn't like her showing up. <laughs> the image here we were down at the show we put on that was down on the end over on twenty twenty, I think this one was. And uh, just be, actually just before COVID, that we took first place in people's choice with the with the the one on the left. My one, of my grandfather had the links. Yep. And stuff. I think you got another photo picture of that slide there with that big picture of my folks together. I think I do here. It might be the next one. No, this yep. is another one of the show. I think. Oh, with a picture in front of it. Yes, yes. Yeah, we put that picture in front of it. And my sister and I would just talk to people, and people just you know. This way, they could really mean, you know, describe where the machines came from. And I think that helped us win that day. I'm sure it does. Because there was a guy beside me, he had two Karasakis, and he said they're worth $18,000. Here we were, rich stock machine. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> it, was, it was a good day for us. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, and Robbie LaCroix says that one sled they raced over 5,500 laps. Yeah, he did. He still got that sled, I believe. And he says this is a great picture of the Goves, that one that's in the middle yep. of the screen there. Yeah, he, and then, he, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. What? Give him what? I live in Enfield now. 
Enfield, yeah. Yeah, just outside of like I came right draft. All right, so Brian Van Haverbeek loves the cats, and he is a cat guy. Oh, Brian, yeah. Brian Brian's mostly a kitty cat guy, but he loves cats. So I believe all cats, yes. Yeah. Uh, my wife and I, I haven't discussed it, but I would like to find a kitty cat just to add to my collection. Nice. I might get rid of a – I got a couple other sides I can work on. Somebody wants a 70 cat, just but, you know, I've got one down back. It's got a – got to put another motor into it, but the rest of it's all that. Nice. I'm just out in the field here riding again. Nice. Yeah, that wank was got that deep. The just sound to it for sure. Yeah. There's Joe on a 292 link. Um, my, yeah. grandf my grandfather bought that machine to use a trapper. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I used to go. I, I'm a trapper myself. Yeah. I learned the trade from him. He used that machine to get on the trap check his trap lines yeah yeah we had a quite a long trap line that's a one day cut almost that is cool so that's yeah. that's got a lot of family history yeah and then um the other thing i wanted to point out this image here we're looking at here is the same image as this cover image i've got a program that removes the background so i remove the background but it's the same image right and, uh, and I just put some text around it and some purple behind it. And yeah, that is very cool. Oh, and there are more comments coming in here. They're coming in hot and heavy, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, ben, ben Thomas says first snowmobile he rode was a 73 Lynx 292. And that sled is still in his family, which is cool. Good. Good. Glad to and, see that. And then Jim yeah, Holbrook says he belongs to the Lime Pinnacle Club. Yeah, I recognize that name. Nice. And then uh, Josh Leverker, I know he was some on. Of the guys. Oh, nice. Yeah. Josh Leverker, I think he was on either last week or the week before. He says, Good evening from Turin, New York. I think two weeks ago. But yeah, that's cool. Good evening. He's going to have at all the snowmobiles and the paraphernalia. Yes. Out there. He was out in New York, correct? Yes. Yeah, he should have. That guy should have turned that into him. He's got so much stuff. Definitely. He had some amazing yeah. stuff. It's good to see him. Oh, them Yamahas, he had were unbelievable. Yes. Okay, what else? We Here we go. Is this a more current sled? Uh, yeah. Current sled. My oldest daughter, Cheryl. She rides. Like I said, the last couple of years, they were too busy. Coming with the I sure. first see her get snowmobile and more again. Once they grow up and on their own, you know, they're in the teenage right now. But they, you know, that 18, they do what they want. And she'll probably get back in the snowmobile and they get more. But she's still got yeah. that. So, oh, yeah. The, I remember um, I bought two brand new Polaris back in 91. Carol and yeah. Joe. We had about six inches. And you know, they said, Dad, can we try out the new machines? That's the I go ahead. And then I left the property, put 100 miles on each machine that day. Wow. Yeah, this is one of my Ida cats. This is 2005 I had on one on yeah. one of the trails. Nice. Two up sled. Yeah. And here's Joe on a Yamaha. He had a 1200 Nitro. Uh, he, that machine was almost too much for her because she didn't get She only she weighed 115 pounds. And sure. Know we, sure. We, oh, like we both like speeds. So probably I should mention how fast we're going, but I want to trip up. Goes by me. She's like it up to 112, Dad. Wow. That is something, yeah. Oh, Thanks. and then Todd McMillan is asking what year is that Lynx? He said he has a 71 Lynx. I think that's a 71, 72 Lynx. 72 Lynx, it is. Yep. Nice. They change the color of white. And then Rich Shad is saying hello from Cleveland, New York. Oh, and then Jill's got another comment. She says, Dad used to come out and say, slow down. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then them two girls, they had handle right. They, I almost I was letting me put a governor on them. Sure. Sure. They, they never got, they were good drivers and they still are good drivers. Nice. 
72, 399 mm-hmm. G. That's a good bet. Yeah. yeah. I raised a, I, I raised a 399 year a few years ago for a guy that had a 399 cheetah all fixed up. And he came over to me and I was up to the races and he says, You want to race today? I said, I ain't got any with me. So I can find you home and stuff. So he stuck me into the 55 plus and there was like 30 sleds. And they put, now I signed up as number 27. So I was way back in the row. And he said, Drive it like you stole it. I said, Okay. I ain't coming out of the 11 to 12 laps, and I ended up breaking the motor mounts, and I don't know what else I broke on that thing. I was in the air when I was on the ground because I never groomed out the, the racetrack for us whole time. They left the two foot holes there for us. So I oh, think we run it up and everything. Yeah, it felt like a snow cross race more than anything else. <laughs> I felt that ride two days later. I told my girls, yeah, was I had to show my girls how you race with Noah. Sure. It was fun. It really was. That is cool. And speaking of 72 cheetahs, when I was a kid, it wasn't our first sled. It was our second sled, but we had a 72 cheetah. And that, that yep. 72 cheetah has everything to do with why I do this podcast today. Just wonderful oh, memories of that. Yep. And we're good sleds. Yes. Yeah, that was the only year with that body style. And they switched in 73 to yeah, another they, body style, which I like that, too. I like I like that also. But, oh, yeah, but this, Go ahead. My wife on my 2004 day, I, I still got that sled. I kept the help yeah. the back. And the shed, nice. I keep the back. Company shows up or whatever. Sure. Had a guy come up from Florida come go and he hadn't been on the He tried to move back. <laughs> yeah. a little story. New sleds here. I got rid of my 2005 after I retired. I went down to Limit. Hillsboro, and I said, well, I'd like to trade in the sled. I got, you know, I had both of them with me. I went out, and they gave me a deal, two up sled, and I went in. And but then they were doing the pre buy, so you're saving up, saving almost twenty five hundred or three thousand dollars in rebate right off the bat. That you ordered the sled, but they were only going to make sleds that year for what it was ordered. So I ordered a brand new sled, left the, the two up there, and. <clears throat> Gonna come home with the other sled, and I went over to the restaurant. I'm eating lunch, and my wife calls me up and she says, You trade sleds? I said, Oh, yeah, I bought a 2020 ZR 600 with all the high windshield and mirrors and all the stuff that I wanted on it. And I would do with the other sled, it's in the trail I'm bringing home. I said, So you have something to ride? She said, Well, I want a new sled too. I said, really do. She said, Yes, I do. I said, Well, okay. So are you going to pay for it? She said, oh, yeah, I'll pay for it. But I knew it was, a, it was fun, you know, rubbing that into her. So I <laughs> walked back into the snowmobile shop with the paperwork, sat down in front of the lady. I said, we've got a problem, ladies. <laughs> and she looked at me. I was just a serious guy. Yeah, I had a, you know, I was very good. I didn't crack a swan. I said, <laughs> I says, we got a problem here. And said, what's the problem? The wife. Uh-oh, you got to cancel this letter. I said, no, you got to copy this. You got to order one identical for her. <laughs> but we saved six thousand dollars by buying two sleds at the top. Yeah, that and worked at, out. And at today's prices, I could get my money back on them sleds right now. Wow! Yeah. So, but, you know, at the air ride, it's you get really spoiled on these sleds compared to the old vintage sleds for sure. They come along. Oh, yeah. You park them side, and you feel like a fifty years difference there. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Those old sleds, as fun as they were, they did beat you up after a long day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is one of the decals I had on the sled. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. That's still yeah I think, and that's back to the beginning. Yeah, back to the beginning there. Yep. Oh, cool. Cool. So let me take that down. And uh, we're going to do Amzo real quick. And then uh, we've got plenty more video clips and things to talk about and show. And I can't believe we're like over halfway through already. This just flies I see, by. See the clock there. Sure. But uh, where's my AMZO promotion? We've got a a promotion right now on AMZO. If you're a preferred customer, uh, you get this free 8-in-1 T-handle screwdriver with every order over $75. This promotion goes on until March 26th. You need to use the promo uh, promo code free tool. Now, this is for preferred customers, and the way a preferred customer program works is there's a $10 fee to join, much like a Costco membership, but uh, that by doing that $10, you're going to get that ten dollars back probably on your first order because instead of getting the the retail price now you're getting twenty five percent off 
on just about everything. And once you hit $100, you're getting free shipping. So it's an incredible value. And uh, there's a great time to do it now because you get this great tool. If you're curious about this, there's a link in the description uh, that says Preferred Customer Program. Just click that link. Just a couple of clicks to join the Preferred Customer Program. Once you've joined that, then click the Amazon logo and start shopping. Everything you click on is going to come up at that deep, deepest level of discount uh, because you've joined the Preferred Customer Program. You're going to save all that money right on the first order. And once you hit $100, you got free shipping. It's an incredible value. Um, so cool. We've got plenty more to look at tonight. Uh, yeah. Let me take a look here at um, my next video clip. Now, you were at a, a vintage snowmobile show. Uh, I think it was the Andover Snowfest. Yes, I was this year. I didn't enter anything into it, but I did go down and see what was going on. I ran with some of the old friends and stuff down. Nice. And you shared some video clips with me, and we're going to take a look at those right now. Let's take a look. Yep. Just taking a moment to look at Yeah, thank you, Alan, so much for those images. We really appreciate that. This is one of the lower years. I've seen a lot more sleds than that one other year. We were down there. Uh, the side of another two, three hundred feet of them all lined up up through there. Wow. Then, yeah, I, the weather, I think, what it was this year with the rain and stuff. It's been people. such a mild winter, yeah. yeah. Uh, even I wasn't into it. That's why I couldn't load, I pick myself to load the sleds and take that. Sure. I was like, my sister still snowmobiles a lot. He yeah. kind of retired a few years ago. And so I'm, so I'm, I think I'm going to buy a new snowmobile. She's riding that uh, links around the field. back into it. Now she owns a, a brand new two up sled. So yeah, sure. Out of cab. Then, then her husband got back into it. Picked up a, a used Yeah, five, seven, right that. But they live right on the rail trail, so it's pretty handy for them. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that's going to be nice. Yeah, but this year, like, then, we, no, we, 
we didn't register this year. We're not going to make it worthwhile. So we sure, sure. Now, if people are watching, they probably noticed these uh, snowmobiles, these old snowmobiles, about 100 years old, based on a Model T. Yeah. Um, you were able, I think it was the same show, you were able to catch up with a couple of these people for interviews, weren't you? I interviewed two of them, yeah. Excellent. In fact, that's what I've got queued up next. Let me uh, get where I need to be here, and I'm going to queue these up, and we'll take a look at these interviews. There's the 1924. 1924 uh, TT. It's a ton truck, Model T. And it has original uh, West Ossipy snowmobile kit, conversion kit. And the tracks were originally canvas belts and the problem with the canvas belts is they would get wet and swell up and fall off and so I took the cleats off and I put them on an endless belt and that seems to stay on pretty well. Good, good. Done a nice job of this race. It's been quite a project. Work in progress. Yeah. Look at that. I finished it in 2006. Finished in 2006? Yep. Good. Yeah. Good. And we've run it ever since. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing to think that that's over a hundred. That's a hundred years old. Yeah. Yeah. He he comes there every year with it. He doesn't live that far away. Like you said, he lives over in Austin. Not that far for him to travel to. Nice, I, nice. I asked him. I told these guys that I videoed him. I said he might be going to a podcast. Maybe they, maybe they found this website here tonight. I didn't. I should have wrote down the names, but I didn't remember where they didn't have the phone number stuff. I was out to call them about tonight. But. Nice. If anyone viewing this knows them, please you know message yeah. this, message them, or send them a link to this podcast so they can see themselves on here. And then you caught up with another guy with a 1925. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at that one. The snowmobile is a 1925 Model T ton truck enclosed cab. I don't know what else you want to know. No, that's good right there. I mean, the immaculate shape here. Work in progress. Work in progress. Wow. Nice. Yeah, very, very cool. Yeah. And, uh, and Ossipi, I think, is where they had either a manufacturing facility where they were producing these or doing kits. Do you know the yeah. story behind that exactly? What was that? What were they, they doing had, there in Ossipi? I think Ford dealership took on uh, the kits over there. I think that's what it was. I sure where the kits originally came from. That may be something. When I see them again next year, I'll get on a little more information about them. We can do a podcast on them guys again and get more yeah. information. That maybe, would be amazing. Maybe even get them involved on a podcast. Yeah, bring them on sometime. Yeah, if you can find out who owns that or who, you know, who's got, associated with that. Yeah, I like to bring the guy that does my motor work on Wayne on, and we'll get Robbie on here sometime too about some of He's he kind of got me the one back into the vintage sled stuff, but you ought to see him about vintage cars. That he, him and his dad got quite a collection. They sell them and buy them and fix them up and everything else. Oh yeah, maybe get them on a muscle car podcast. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's yep. Yeah. Great idea. And then Jeff Wesner is making a compliment. He, he likes the images from the show that you took. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Ben Thomas says, look like that was a very nice show. Quite a variety of beautiful looking sleds. Yes. Yeah. They have a good they have a good show down. I've done it for, I think, 12 years now. Yes. And Mark Radil says, nice pictures. Great to see participation from the young lads in the hobby. Start them young and hook them for life. Absolutely. Yeah. That is the future of this hobby. Yeah, I mean, I got these sleds, you know, I'm hoping they're going to stay in the family and hoping maybe the grandsons will kick in and maybe one of them wants to get up, up to be on the teenagers, kick in so we can keep the sleds going here after I'm long gone. Yeah, that's their legacy, you know, the family legacy. That's amazing. Yeah, it'd be the fifth generation owning them. Yeah, and if that doesn't inspire them to keep it going, I don't know what will, you know. I don't know what else will, is right, yeah. <laughs> you know? Not much else you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Longevity. I got longevity blood in me, I guess. Like my grandmother lived to be 104. And my father was 91. I think my mother was 87. So, Wow. I guess that I'm going to cool. 
for a while, you know what, for a while. Yes. I'm on, well, I, I'll, I'll be 70 in July, so. Wow. Yeah, I'm 10 years behind you. And uh, John Spranger Jr. says, thank you for the great pictures. Uh, ben well, Thomas says, uh, loves that 1924 TT, awesome looking. Ah, here we go. Our good friend Rob Hilditch is saying, it's a good show, but it's too loud where he is right now. Uh, he can't hear it, but he likes the pictures. So it good. sounds like he may not be coming on because we're. I think he's at a is a, he's at an event, and I think it'd be too loud for him to to try to come on and join us. But I'm I'm glad he's viewing it though. He is he's very committed to this podcast. We got to give him props to that. Oh yeah, he's he very is. committed to this podcast. Yeah, he's very committed. He does a well, well, good job of advertising the AMS oil. He does. He brings a lot to the show for sure. Yeah, I'm switching and, my stuff with AMS oil. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Any, if anything we can do to help you on that, just message me behind the scenes. It's in your list here. Yes. I appreciate that. And Mad Dog says, I would love to have a Model T conversion. I've heard they were used by mailmen in rural areas. Nice stuff there. That's what I heard, too. They were used back then. Yeah. In fact, that Christmas special, uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. They've got a mailman in one of yeah. those. Yeah. I remember and, when you talk about Christmas, um, friends of our Siemens. With another baby family group of snowmobiles we snowmobiled with. And Jim, who was the same age I was, we decided one night we would take the snowmobile. There was plenty of snow on the road. Get him dressed in a Santa Claus outfit, and we caught up a whole bunch of people saying that Santa was going to be going by at such and such a time to have the kids. And we drove right up over the lawns, and Santa waved to him, and off we go down to the next house. And, the police didn't bother us at all. They just, you know, we were right down the road to the next house. It was, it was fun. That is cool. yeah. I'll bet, I bet there's a lot of little kids that have wonderful memories of that today as adults. Oh, yeah. 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 That is cool. That is cool. And Jill says they have the vintage snow suites, too. Oh, we well, still got the snow suits here. Yep. I, I back, oh, suits, I, yes. Yeah. Mine doesn't fit me anymore, but I did wear my dad's at that vintage show now. I still wear it for the shows. Nice. I still got all them jackets, even that green one he had on. Nice. Now we've got a few more video clips, and the clock is definitely ticking. We've got we're we're nine forty eight already. I don't know where this time went. That means fun. we're having fun, which is good. Yes, but, it is. Uh, we've got a, a video clip you took of a seventy three Polaris TX Starfire four forty. Let's roll yep. that real quick, and then we'll catch up on the other side. Yeah, it's hard not to love a TX. Oh, I know. I, I like to look at those slides myself. Um, I don't mind like the LT grays and the formula out of cats. Sure. And then there were more Polaris's at that show. Let's take a look at that, too. And I'm, I'm kind of blowing through these real quick because oh, I want to make fine. sure we get to them all. But, yeah, let's look at some more Polaris's here real quick. Polaris is here. 73 Starfire, 74 Colt SS 295, and a 72 Colt SS 295. Those three yeah. sleds accurate shape. Yes. As as can be, you thought they just came out of the factory. They, they sure look it. They've been all redone and stuff. Whoever did the work on them did an excellent job. Nice. Nice. And then that young man we were looking at earlier on the Panther, we've got a clip of him going by. Let's take a look at that real quick. Okay. Cool deal. Yeah, we got to do some adjustments on that, on that timing of the carburetor of that sled. It's not sure. perfect yet. I just ran into a guy the other day who you work on them old stacks, motors, other mm -hmm. guy. And him and Wayne, I think we get straightened out to so run good and smooth for him. Get all worked out. Yeah. Sure. And I think we, go ahead, I'm sorry. The gas you get nowadays is the best. I mean, I'm, run, I'm running racing fuel in my Puma. It really wow. runs. Wow. 
And then the other one, because I, I want, I, and I apologize, I'm rushing, but I wanted to make sure we get to all of these clips. And we got one last one. It's about three minutes long. Um, this, this is some uh, clips from the show that you went to, and I put a little music under it, just kind of put it all together. Let's take a look at this, and we'll catch up on the other side. And we'll, uh, yeah, let's take a look. <laughs> So, Alan, thank you so much for getting footage from this show. Oh, uh, yeah. I like that John Deere right there on the motor up through the hood. Yes. That's one of the sharp ones. That is cool. Let's see if I can get a better look at that. There we go. Oh, we, yeah. No, the other way. It's at the end of the video. Let's see. Let's right, see. There. right there. And then I had a question, too, that uh, Merck with the green lettering that's a mountain sled mountain sled all right and is that yeah. something merck did or is that an aftermarket project somebody did or no merck had a mountain sled out in the west um because i saw another one when i was out there this year in one of the museums i've noticed it out there but this is the first one i've ever seen the only one i know of in new england unless somebody else has got one out there that i don't know about um, he's been to the show a couple of times with this sled Nice, because I see that running board has got the holes in it like the modern mountain sleds do yeah. for snow evacuation. My knowledge, it's a factory built. 
That's impressive. Ahead of their time, they were. Oh, yeah. That is cool. So we, we're like four minutes left. Um, we've got a ton of comments that have come in, which I'm going right. to pop on the screen. But is there anything that we haven't discussed or anything that you wanted to share that you haven't yet? No, I think we've done a good job here, Mike. But they were within the hour like we want to do, so. Yeah, we covered a lot of ground in this hour, too, which is cool. Yeah. And, and I'm going to pop uh, comments on the screen while we're talking. Um, oh, yes. Uh, Ra, uh, Ra, uh, Kevin is saying thank you to Rob for the die cast. He sent him a die cast uh, after a conversation that we had a couple of weeks ago. Good. Oh, it's in uh, TX Starfire. I'm just kind of doing this real brief. Like the star, sound of the Starfire. It, it, yeah, let's see. And great show. Thank you to Mike and Alan. Appreciate that. Good. Appreciate it. Uh, Todd McMillan says he had a 70 650 TX 2 plus. Uh, should have kept it, sold it 10 years ago. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, the way, I know what you mean. The way uh, the, the interest that's that, that, uh, be coming into this, uh, into the vintage snowmobiles, you know, everyone sold a lot of the things that they didn't realize would turn into being as collectible as they are. Oh, that's the thing I never expected to mean. If I known it was going to be like it was now, I would have bought me a, a King Cack bat in the day and put it in the in the pond totally. store it and have to sell it for twenty five, thirty thousand now. You don't want to pay two thousand dollars for one bat. That yeah. Money in the it, bank. Who knows? It's true. If we if we had a crystal ball knowing what we know now, we could have uh, acquired all those new sleds in the seventies and never even uncreated them. You know, uh, and they'd be they would have appreciated, you know, I don't know how many times by now, uh, you know. But it would uh, be interest rates in the banks, that's for sure. Oh, it would have been a wonderful investment. Yeah. Oh, and so thank you for the stories. Glad my Panther could make it on this show. Alan Elton Hennessy. Yeah. Very cool. And we appreciate your friends that you brought onto the show, too, by the way. Good. Bringing some new people to the show. We really appreciate that because we're trying to get the word out. And anyone who's viewing, whether you're a new viewer or a regular viewer, please help us to get the word out about the podcast. We're trying to uh, spread the word and, and uh, get this in front of as many people as we possibly can. Oh, Jill says it was a fun podcast. We appreciate that. Yeah. <clears throat> Jeff Wesner thank, says thank you for sharing your story. Another great show. An excellent podcast. Thank you, Alan, for coming on to share the rich snowmobiling history in your family. Enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, we still do. Yes. There'll be plenty more people coming on. Here's Rob Hilditch saying, great show. He's at that event probably viewing and not hearing it, which is, you know, you do what you can, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, that, Mad Dog says lots of good memories. Steve Woodward says great show. We appreciate that. And I'm buzzing through these real quick. Uh, Mark Radil says had a great time again tonight. Thanks again to all, Mike and Alan. Appreciate that. Uh, Midnight Rider says great show. Love the history. That's what makes snowmobiling more fun. So it does. It's, it's true. It makes the modern snowmobiling more relevant knowing, you know, the history where it all came from. Yeah. And being part of the history is even more fun. Like us. Yes. Those memories are just unbelievable. Yeah. You don't forget. No, all of us who were there back in the day. I mean, I was just a little kid, but I have such wonderful memories of the early 70s. Oh, there's just nothing like it. Um, that's why I do this podcast. Uh, Jill Fien, your, your daughter, says, I'll send you some vintage race pictures. Would love to see those. Yeah, she, the, I'll see if I can get some from Robbie. Race yeah, we'll bring you on again in the fall and, and do it again with some new material. Uh, Dirk Seam says, just caught the end of tonight's show. And, yeah, once it's done, Dirk, just circle back and catch it from the beginning. Uh, Kevin Colhane says, great show. Cold beer and the Leafs are kicking butt. Can it get any better? Cool deal. Yeah. Maple Leafs must be. Cool yeah. deal. We'll toss one back for us. And uh, Dave Trim says, love the history you brought to the show tonight. We appreciate that. We love bringing the history, and we love that people are interested in it. It, it kind of completes the circle. We love doing it, and that there are people out there that are interested in viewing it just uh, makes it all worthwhile. It makes it fun for everybody. And yep. I like that this is becoming a nice little community where we can all get together and do that. And people, right. you know, have comments and questions and memories and details. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get together great little... to another podcast again. I'll have some pictures. Maybe I can get a couple of the other guys sit right at the table with me. We can all talk. Try to get Wayne over to talk about the mode. Yes, do a deep dive on that. Yeah, and get Robbie up here at the same time. Absolutely. I'll tell you a lot about the yeah. 
Good deal. So, yeah, we, I don't know where this hour went, but we our hour is up, and it is time to wind it down. But, Alan, thank you so much thank for you, coming Mark. on. And thank you also for your friends and family for joining us and all of the viewers, new and, and the, the new viewers and the regular viewers. It's just been a wonderful hour. Uh, we thank everyone for that. And uh, as always, the last uh, word goes to Amsoil. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much to all. Have a thank good you. evening. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Rob and Mike. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing good. Mike, yourself? Very well. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Now, uh, today, we're going to be talking about AMSOIL. And uh, in a few moments, we're going to show you how you can get the deepest discounts, free shipping, and free gifts when you order your AMSOIL products through us. But first, I'm going to ask Rob to give you a quick description of what AMSOIL is and why you should consider using AMSOIL products in your motorized vehicles. Thanks, Mike. AMSOIL is 100% synthetic oil. Everybody uses AMSOIL for a different reason. Some people like the benefits that AMSOIL is warrantied for 25,000 miles or one year. The reason we can do that is because AMSOIL doesn't oxidize. It doesn't form the usual carbons, gum, sludges like petroleum oils do. That's why we can keep it in the engines longer. Petroleum oils never do wear out. They oxidize themselves. That's why they have to be changed at 3,000 kilometers. And AMSOIL likes the benefit that you only have to change the oil once a year. That saves some money. Some of the people like the benefit of AMSOIL is it's a slipperier type lube. By having a slipperier type lube, it cuts down friction drag. By less friction and drag, engines run 20 to 50 degrees cooler, better gas mileage. Now, AMSOIL says 25% more protection than the industry requires is in the AMSOIL bottles. My average customer gets about 10% increase in gas mileage. That's a big savings. Yeah. And by cutting down friction and drag, for every 10 degrees you cut down the friction and drag, doubles the life of the engine. So by having the engine run cooler, it makes it last longer. Some people like the benefit of the range of the AMSOIL. AMSOIL's flash point is 425 degrees and it pours at 50 below zero. Wow. If you ever tried petroleum oil when it's 10 below, it turns to the honey. And yep. in the summertime, petroleum oil thins out. And once, once it thins out, that's when it starts breaking down. So AMSOIL is an all season oil, can give you better gas mileage, longer engine life, less maintenance. It ends up being cheaper over a year's time running AMSOIL than it is petroleum oils. That's amazing. That's amazing. And AMSOIL is, is available for pretty much any motorized vehicle, uh, any from, anything from lawn equipment, cars, trucks, boats, ATVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles. Yep, yep. And a lot of people phone me up and say, well, what's the benefit of our gear loop? Exactly what I told you about the engine oil. It pours in cold weather, it runs cooler, makes the equipment last longer. And they say, well, it's the benefit of the small engine. Same thing, makes the engine run cooler, last longer, better performance. So it saves on all the applications that AMSOIL has available. Wonderful, wonderful. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk now. Uh, hopefully this has convinced people uh, to think about maybe joining us in the AMSOIL experience. Let's talk about some of the discounts and free shipping and how that all happens. I'm going to pop a, a graphic on the screen. And uh, yeah, by all means, if you want to talk talk people through how this preferred customer program works. AMSOIL has a number of different programs. One of our main ones is a catalog customer where somebody can order directly out of our catalog. If they order out of the catalog, they order $100 worth, AMSOIL will ship it right to their house. But our best program is our preferred customer. For only $10 for six months, you become a preferred customer, you save 25% on all the product. You order $100 worth, they're going to give you free shipping. Um, you don't have to order a whole case. You can mix and match. Say you want four bottles of small engines, seven bottles of 5W30, and a couple of gear loops. You can mix and match. You can order one bottle at a time if you want. There's no minimums, no maximums. By being a preferred customer, you save over 25% on all the products you're going to buy. Amsoil sends you extra gifts, uh, a $5 gift certificate on your birthday, $5 when you renew, renew your account, and stuff like that. So it's a good way to save on some of the products you want to buy. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it's an incredible value. And this is the, the deepest level of discount that anyone can get when ordering Amsoil. Is that correct? It is. It is. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's take people through the step-by-step the -step experience of, of placing an Amsoil order. Then that would include signing up for the preferred customer discount, or sorry, preferred customer program so they can receive those deepest levels of discount. So let's go to the website. This is what the website is going to look at look like. These are some screenshots. If you Once you go to Amsoil.com, there's a link in the description, or you can just type that into a browser, Amsoil.com. This is the page you land on at the upper corner of the page there. You see how I've circled in red. That is the link to click the join now link that will take you to the preferred customer program page where you can take advantage of all of these discounts and free shipping and everything that we've just been talking about. This is what that page looks like. In the lower right, you're going to click join now. This will pop up. You select the duration you'd like, whether it's six months or 12 months and click add to cart. Now, once this, this uh, pop up goes away, you'll be back on the main page and the upper left, you'll see where I've got that red arrow. It says shop. Now you can start shopping for products and on your very first order, you're going to get these discounts and the free shipping as long as it's over $100. You'll get all of these benefits right away. 
So once you click shop, it's going to take you to uh, some product, the product page. There's different types of oils, lubricants, so on and so forth. For the benefit of this exercise we're doing now, I'm just going to click motor oil. It shows different types of motor oil. Let's click gasoline. Now this takes us to an item. It's uh, their synthetic motor oil. And you can see the item there and there's choices for different viscosities. But take a look at the price. Let's take a closer look. Let's zoom in. Uh, but if you've joined the preferred customer program first, you're going to automatically get the deepest levels of discount. That's what we're looking at here. You're saving $3.80 on that quart of oil. Instead of paying $16.29, you're now paying, paying $12.49 for that quart of oil. That is the deepest level of discount you can possibly get. And then uh, you just add the, the, the quantity that you'd like. You select any other items that you're thinking about, add them to the cart. And once you uh, click add to cart for the final time, you're going to see this come up at the top of the screen. It's going to show your items and your, your um, the total that you're at so far. <coughs> Pardon me. And then uh, you just click view cart in the upper right, and that'll take you to your cart. Uh, take a close look here at the upper right. That blue box shows that you're getting free shipping. You're eligible for free shipping on this order because it's over $100. That little yellow box shows that you've got the preferred customer membership on your order that gives you the deepest levels of discounts for the next 6 to 12 months. And then below that, you've got the, the items that have been selected. I just, for the exercise here, I selected nine quarts of this signature series. But that brings us up over $100 for the free shipping. We're saving $34.20. $34 and if you're ready to, to finish, you click checkout now, and that takes you uh, to this screen here. If you haven't signed up with an Amsoil account at this point, just click in the lower right to create an account, create a new account. It's going to ask you for some basic information, a name and those types of things. Now let's take a closer look. You'll see this gray shaded box. This is a very important box. This is going to ask you if someone has referred you to Amsoil. And if so, please enter my name. My name is Mike Lapierre. It's spelled right there on the screen for the correct spelling. And also the referral number, 304-555-94. That's how um, you make sure that Rob and I get credit for this. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I have signed up for Amsoil under Rob. So when you order using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. So if you enjoy these podcasts that we're doing, this is a wonderful way to support the podcast because when you order uh, using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. And the commissions I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing this pod these podcasts. So I thank you in advance for that, for using my referral number. I very much appreciate it. Uh, and once you've done that, you just go into the next screen to enter your payment information and you're done. Now, once you've entered, once you've placed your order that's over $100, uh, and that, that order includes your Amsoil Preferred Customer Program, you are now eligible to get a free DVD from myself. Now, this is going to be either a muscle car DVD or a vintage snowmobile DVD. Uh, use the email address on the screen, wkspodcasts at gmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know which email. I'm sorry. Let me know which DVD you would like me to send you, the muscle car or the uh, uh, vintage snowmobile DVD, and I'll get that right out to you. As you're typing in that, that email in the subject line, be sure and type in capital letters, free DVD requests, so it stands out as I'm checking my email, and we'll get that right out to you. So I guess the last thing, Rob, that we wanted to talk about is... Uh, if someone is considering Amsoil as a business opportunity. Um, yeah, yes. If anybody has a retail or a commercial account and they would like to buy directly from Amsoil, just send Mike a line. He'll show you how to set up and you can buy directly from Amsoil. But if you are interested in starting your own part-time business, a part-time business that can grow into a full-time income, Mike and I will show you the Amsoil marketing plan. Amsoil has a large selection of products that cover almost every application. So it doesn't matter if you're into snowmobile, boating, or ATV, and or, or hot rods. We have an oil for every application. It's a fun type business that I really enjoy doing. Where else can I go and have fun and make money doing it? And Mike and I are here to help you all the way along if you need any help on how to promote or, or to find new accounts. We're here to help you. For sure, for sure. So when you sign up under that uh, that number, this 304-555-94, you're getting Rob and I as a team. Now, Rob has been doing AMSO for 40 years. Can you believe that? 40 years. So he knows every aspect of this business and he knows all of the ins and outs of the products. So he'll be able to help you with any kind of product questions or any kind of questions to show you the different business models that you can do with AMSOIL. And then the other thing that you get when you sign up under me is I've got a strong background in social media. So if you need some coaching on how to generate AMSOIL leads using Facebook and YouTube, I'm happy to coach you with that when you sign up under Rob and I. Uh, you get both of us as a team uh, to help you, to coach you, to support you, whatever you need to get you, get you off and running with this business and having fun with it. it like Rob said, it's enorm an enormous amount of fun. If you're like Rob and I and you enjoy going to any kind of you know boat shows car shows motorcycle shows snowmobile shows anything with a motor you like going to those shows those events those races this is a great way to turn that into a a, a, a income opportunity for you yes yes and just by wearing my amzo hat at one of these events people come up and ask me about amzo people, people don't know where to buy it and i'm there to help them show them where they can buy the product perfect perfect well cool cool well this is great uh, any final thoughts rob before we wrap it up Amsoil is a fun business. Amsoil has been around since 1968. You know, it was the first 
synthetic oil to be AI approved. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's very early in the game too, isn't it? Yes. For sure. Well, good. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for viewing. Hopefully, we've gotten you excited as excited as we are about the Amsoil products. We'd love it if you could enjoy if you could join us either uh, as someone who uses the Amsoil products or to join the Amsoil team uh, as a business opportunity. And we thank you so much for viewing. Have okay. a great day. You have a good day.